So, me and my bro, John here, we're heading down to Imperial Valley to do a little evening hunt on the Dove. Um, opening day was Saturday, this past Saturday, for the second season of Dove. Pheasants open, quails open, ducks open, goose is open, deer season, you know, the deer, deer season's open. Everything but uh, bent tail pigeons, so we're going, we're going to go down and have that evening shoot tonight, and uh, hopefully we do pretty good. We've got a pretty good spot. Um, like I said, down in Pearl Valley. It takes about an uh, hour, hour and a half or so to get there. And uh, we should get the birds moving from the, I think from uh, water to roost is what this place is all about. Got uh, obviously Dieter coming with us and uh, we hope to have a good time. John, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty reliable spot, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's a spot I've hunted ever since I was in high school. Very cool. I'm excited. Spot I found years and years and years ago. Didn't you go down there and shoot a limit uh, Saturday? No, I didn't get down there. We had weather. It was raining. Wind was blowing and stuff. So, Where'd you end up? I, at that same spot. Oh, okay. Yeah, I went down there because it's a, just a reliable spot. It's just always, uh, always seem to be able to get birds there every single time we go. Cool. Except obviously when the weather's not bad, or weather's bad, you can't, but... Yeah, I'm kind of wondering what uh, what this weather's done to the birds down there, but from what I saw, everybody shot pretty well on opening day. So, yeah, there was a guy chasing a rooster down there, too. Yeah, I hope we chased a couple roosters. Definitely. It'd be nice to get into some pheasant. Yep. You hunted opener, didn't you? Yeah. Where did, where did you guys end up? Uh, we hunted south of Yuma. Okay, you could do okay? Oh yeah, I limited out in minutes. I told you about our Arizona hunt, didn't I? Oh, you guys are just, you guys are slinging them up. It was unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, we could have stayed five days in the spot we were in. It was <laughs> best dove hunting in, uh, in North America I've ever experienced. Really? Yeah. That good, huh? It was that good. I mean, it was... It was hey, well, I'll have to go next year. Oh yeah, you're in. Um, it's still shot down there? They're still shot, but it was just, it was very fun. Uh, you know, I, we hunted four days in a row, and it seemed like it got better every day. And I should have stayed the whole week because that's how good it was. But everybody packed up on, um, what is it, open Thursday? I think everybody packed up on Sunday. I should have stuck it out, though. Fantastic hunting. Is uh, that, you, theoretically, is that all refuge? Uh the area we were hunting was, but there's also areas around it that aren't refuge. Oh. But, uh, but uh, you know, you could pick out white wings every day. Oh, they, really? Yeah, if you wanted to. That's how good it was. I, to me, it doesn't matter. I, I just like shooting dove. Right, that's how I... It's white wing or not. Yeah. No big deal. It could deal. be Eurasians, white wings, yeah. I don't care. But, it could uh, be pigeons for that matter. Good time. <laughs> but um, right now also, you know, I just this year has been fantastic for everything. There's more quail than I've seen in 25 years. Really? Yeah, it's so thick with quail, I can't even believe it. Oh, no. I'm not hunting. Why? I don't have a shotgun. I brought a 12 gauge. I got ammo. I meant to bring my 20 gauge. Yeah, there's ammo in here. Grab it. Is there enough? There's plenty. Okay. Come here. Heal up. <coughs> Heal. He thinks it's right here. Yeah. He keeps going back to right here. See? But it's so thick, I don't think he can get in there. Oh, he's in there. Find a bird. That was a good shot. Good shot, John. Huh? Good shot. There he is. Good boy. Heal up. Heal up. Heal. Whoa. Out. Good boy. Here you go, bro. 
You don't lose too many birds around the deep, man. <laughs> Perfect. Good job, Dieter. Good job, buddy. I'm going to have to go get a bottle of water for him. Uh, you want me to go get it? I don't care. All right, I can go get it. Yeah, I'll go get it. They're, uh, they're in the cooler. This is a fun hunt, simple hunt. You know, come down after work and uh, shoot a few birds. Give the D-man a workout. He doesn't like Dove though, because the feathers get in his mouth. He'll up, Deep. Yeah, you got some feathers in your mouth. We'll get you some water, okay? Good boy for finding that devil. You knew where it was the whole time, didn't you? Whoa, whoa. Sit down. Let's wait for the dove, bud. Here, bud. Good boy, deep man. You're thirsty. What did the Border Patrol guy say? Oh, cool. So get on it, man. He said, no, no, I totally will. He seems like he's interested in it. Did you give him the site? Yeah, I told him. So I got one Good. There are some birds out on that field. There goes another one. Right over you. Now, they're starting to fly. We'll get some. We don't need a limit. I just want to get a couple birds. A few birds. Get, let the dog work. Well, that's, that's fine. Here comes another one, John. Coming right over your head. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right there, John. Nice shot, buddy. Dieter, come. Fetch it up. Nice shot, John. All right, I see where we need to go. Heal up. Dieter, come. Come here. Heal up. Whoa. Out. John. Come here, Dieter. Come here. Oh, Cormoran. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm certain there's a lot of people that have put those in the pot thinking they were goose. Come here. All right, here we go. Come here. He a good boy. He a good boy. Okay, here we go, dear. Here we go, buddy. Here we go. That's a miss, Dieter. No bird. No bird. No bird. But he's coming around for more. Hang on. Hang on. See Dieter, Dieter watching it? Here we go. I'll kill it. Fetch it up, Dieter. Fetch it up. Fetch it up. <laughs> Missed. Getting some hot barrel action. Come, Dieter. Good boy. Good boy. Fetch it up. You came come back across, bro. Come on. Come on. Heal up. He's like, this canal sucks. Come. I'll, I'll tell you, he just hates these dove to carry, but he, he loves the action. No, Dieter. Come. Oh, he dropped one. Fetch it up. Come on. Heal up. That's funny. He'll cross where he just crossed. He's got a little spot there I think he's comfortable with. 
Good boy, heal up. Come here. You fetch that bird up and heal. Good boy. You're a good boy. Oh, shoot. They're coming across pretty good, Deep Man. Let's stay right here. Right there. Watch out, camera man. Fetch it up, Dieter. Fetch it up. Look at them all. Good boy. Good boy, Deet. I knew you'd come up. Heal up, buddy. You're a good bird dog. Come here. Heal. Fetch that bird. Heal up. Out. Good boy. Good boy, Dee. You don't lose birds, do you? <laughs> Two more! Right there. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my uh, my old standby spots, my favorite dove spot. Works good uh, during the first half and even the second half. And I invited John to come down and, and uh, check it out. He's never been here before. and. Uh, it's definitely a spot that produces. It's my uh, secret spot, so to say. And uh, it's definitely a good time. Hey, sure beats sitting at home. Anytime you can get the dog out and work. I guess I have to go get that one myself. Did. You know what's even worse is my dog didn't get to see me shoot that one. Uh, about uh, four days ago, three days ago or so, it was raining down here and uh, it was uh, real windy, about 58 degrees, had to wear a sweater. And uh, it's a little slow right now, but normally it's, uh, normally it's pretty good um, considering, but it uh, takes about uh, three, four days for the dove to get back on track. And uh, you know, we might be here just a little premature. But uh, if it was another day or so, it'd be uh, probably real, real good, real, real consistent. But uh, still been good. Still got quite a few, beer, uh, quite a few uh, dove, and shot quite a few uh, shells. See, this isn't too bad in here. Um, if you didn't have a dog, it'd be tough. It's not really tough terrain for him to look through. Uh, it's pretty, it's open, but for a human to go in there, it's a little tough. Did he find him? He found one? Yeah, what, what here? Well, he, he'll find it. I got one down over here too. We're about, so he'll, he'll, he'll go in. in okay, let's get him on it before it gets dark. Find a bird. Find a bird. I think he smells it. Good boy. You got your bird, dude. Call him, tell him to heal up. That dog doesn't lose any birds. <laughs> Good boy, dude. Good boy. Come on. Dieter, fetch it up and heal. Heal up. Out. He a good boy. Let's go find my bird now. Come on. There you go, John. How's that, man? That works pretty good, doesn't it? That's awesome. He's, he's a machine, man. <laughs> so good. Come on, D-man. <laughs> Camacho's place. Everybody knows about this. Everybody that hunts down here. Uh, been around here forever. Obviously, 1946. 
I don't even need to look at the menu. Number 16, I get the enchilada chihuahua every single time. Pretty good stuff. Also, they're known for their carne asada. In fact, in San Diego, people know about the Camacho carne asada. It's fantastic. So if you're down in El Centro, this is the place where you want to eat Mexican food. It's great. My dad built it for the illegals and legals. Right at, you know, in 47, when we had the war in the 40s, um, they had the, the green carters, they call them, the Mexican workers that had the green cards permission to work here. Mm -hmm. And they, um, um, huh? Yeah, he's going to eat some. <laughs> he wants to go taste it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so it started, it was a store for, because he was tired of going to town and getting stuff for them and then delivering them at two in the morning. And the Border Patrol would go in, you know, because there were hi some were hiding, but most of them were already legally here with the green cards. But there was a few that, were, that didn't have cards. So anyway, he didn't want to do something wrong. And uh, so then he got tired of that. And he, you want to move over here? So they want to cook over there. So move over here for a minute. Okay, so anyway, he built a bar all the way across. And we had a jukebox, two tables, and all canned goods and stuff for the people to come, the workers to come and buy for themselves. But then little by little, the uh, farmers, American farmers, start coming in for a Coke and they smell the food, and then they said, do you think honey that could make lunches for us? Because the guys don't like hamburgers or hot dogs. They used to buy, you know, hundreds of them for the workers mm -hmm. and treat them. And my mother said, well, yeah, what would you, would you like? Said, well, whatever you think they're gonna, you know, they like to eat. So she was making three chili meat burritos and three bean burritos for 90 cents. Wow. That's what she sold them for, a big bag of that for each one of those workers. And we were up at 2 in the morning making tortillas, getting these things ready, because they'd come in at around 9 and say, I'm going to need 40, I'm going to need 100, I'm going to need this. And so we <laughs> just that's all the time we spent. And then little by little, things kind of changed, and uh, the white people took over. This is called a special quesadilla. It has cheese inside. And I'm making this so you guys can split it. That looks so delicious. Can, uh, that looks delicious. A lot of people order it, and then they order it with carne asada also inside. You know, uh, old, the older people that have been here forever. <laughs> it does look like, like like a huge Argentinian empanada. Oh, there you go. Well, in Mexico, you would call this well, it's like an empanada, but we call it uh, quesadilla mm -hmm. because it's made with cheese. Empanada usually can be anything: fruit, cheese, meat which I also make, but that's, uh, I make them only when I feel like it. <laughs> Corn, with cheese. I like uh, to make um, empanadas al estilo Sonora, al estilo Indio. Y esas como son? You know, uh, son así, pero el frijol lleva piloncillo, canela, clavo. And uh, it's, it's a sweet empanada, that's what it is to me. But it sounds delicious. Oh, you know, it is. Um, I like to make those. And that's an Indian uh, delicacy. All right, so we're heading out, out to uh, my friend John's dove spot uh, for the second time this week. Um, we were going to go duck hunting, but John had a couple things he needed to do, so we're, we're at least getting out to the dove spot and uh, pretty excited about it because we had a good time last time. Uh, we're going to have about an hour and 10 minutes to shoot. Um, and I brought my old 20 gauge that my father gave me, so I'm kind of excited. I haven't shot it in a while. Um, last trip, I thought I brought it, and I ended up opening my gun sleeve, and it had a 12 gauge in it. Oh, no. I'm not hunting. Why? I don't have a shotgun. I brought a 12 gauge. I got ammo. I meant to bring my 20 gauge. Yeah, there's ammo in here. Grab it. And uh, I was lucky John had some double-A handicaps, which worked out great because we were shooting some dove at extreme distances. And it was powdering them pretty good. But uh, we got Deep Man along to uh, get the birds for us. And um, I'm excited. We're on our way. What do you say, John? Looking forward to it, definitely. Uh, another uh, last-minute speed run. Uh, seemed to always uh, turn out the best. Seems like you have the most fun when you have to just get in the truck and go. And 
sometimes things don't work out, you don't get there early, but this spot usually is good no matter how much time you have. I'd rather be doing this than sitting at home, that's for sure. Looking forward to it. You know, like the old adage, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, shoot game sitting in your rocking chair at home, that's for sure. It's 4.30, so we still have a good half an hour of prime time. So here's the shotgun we were talking about. It's a 80s vintage Japanese built Browning Satori. Um, the Japanese guns were nice because of, they had fresh tooling. So the guns are actually really nice. Um, my dad gave this to me as a gift and I've shot countless of mounts of ducks and uh, shot pheasant with it. More doves than I could even, even think of. And uh, what else? Quail. It's not the best quail gun, it's got a 28 inch barrel, um, but it's fantastic for second season dove. Um, great quail gun. And it's been a good duck gun. Uh, big fan of the 20 gauge, love it. Uh, I see him. Coming in baby. Did that second one go down? Find a bird, Dieter. Good boy. Heal up. Heal up. Come here. Heal up. Whoa. Out. I, I think that second one I may have, uh, I may have just got a, a feather on it. I don't think I, I actually sunk a pellet into it. Fetch it up, Dieter. There you go. Freaking love him, dude. Now call him. Tell him to H E A L U P very sternly. What? Heal up. Heal up. He's going to heal up to me now because I said it. There you go. How do you think, what do you think of that shot, puppy? Over your head! I got one down over there. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Get him in there for your bird. Puppy, he's right here, right? Okay. There we go, that'll mark our spot. Two in there. So now he's got two to find. All right, well, we're just taking off. We just, like I said, came down here earlier. We talked about coming down here and doing a dove shoot. We uh, I think we got a 13 or 14 dove. Uh, Dieter was a uh, retrieving machine for us. If we would've got here an hour earlier, we'd easily got a limit. They came pouring through pretty good. Uh, it was a good time, had some fun. And we're gonna head back home. So, great time.